Sorry, Daniel, to interrupt you, but I cannot hear you. Take two. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, everybody. A good afternoon, good evening in some part of Europe. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome again uh, at the Future Design of Street webinar, fourth edition and fourth session, 2023. We're talking about streets today, specifically about big streets, avenues, boulevards, all the kinds of roads that wants to be big streets or all the kind of uh, neighborhood centers in a way. Um, they are particularly important in our urban society, in our how urbanization, how they work, they connect people uh, at a biggest distance and they give structure to urbanization. That's what we are going to talk about. It. How can we also look to this kind of structure, improve them, transform them, and go make them ready, let's say, for the future in some way. For that reason, we have, again, three wonderful guests here uh, today together online, of course, as a webinar. And we have some audience also here in Porto. Welcome, everybody. Um, we are going to talk about, let's say, some beautiful examples in Barcelona, beautiful examples in uh, Finland and south of Spain, Granada, and I think a, lot, a few other examples over there. So we are looking very forward to hear the guests, which I will introduce in just one minute. I cannot do this alone, so we have also a really big team uh, uh, behind us. Uh, so I would like to uh, thanks again, Ivo Oliveira, Caterina Breya Diaz, Teresa Correa, Bruno Moreira, and of course, Shua, Joana uh, Graça of the Order of Architectus here in Porto that are uh, willing to offer, let's say, their space uh, in this edition. Thank you, everybody. So we are going to start to introduce the three speakers, and then I will ask each of them to present 10 minutes of their story, their, their insights, their knowledge, their questions that they have maybe also for you, for me, for everybody. Because this is a platform to share and to ask questions and also to share possible ideas. That's what we are going to do today. And I hope you get inspired by these three uh, speakers. First speaker is from Barcelona, Joan Caba. He is an architect, urban planner, um, at the Urban Planning Department of Barcelona and the Metropolitan Area, AMB, architect and urban planner. Um, large experience on many issues, but also especially about the role of infrastructure and the urbanization. He was a coordinator, I guess the Reconnect project of Urban is already finished. A wonderful project. It's completely online, the results. And I advise everybody to visit those sites uh, that Schwan maybe later on can share with us and we can put it on the website because I think they have beautiful uh, insights and I hope that you can share it, uh, some of this insight with us. It's important, let's say, how to transform and integrate mobility infrastructure in order to reconnect people neighborhood cities, and not at, and not at least uh, natural spaces. First speaker. Second speaker will be Niklas uh, Alto Sitala. I hope I pronounced that good, because that is a challenge. Thank you very much, Niklas. He is a strategic urban planner for the city of Helsinki. Um, so far, people know Helsinki. It's a really forest-like urbanization uh, pattern. Uh, it feels sometimes city, but also sometimes really forest and landscape. Um, the particularity of the case of Helsinki is, of course, the two lines of the same coin in a way is an urbanization task that is quite densifying for the coming decades, but also how to modernize in a way the mobility system that is maybe laid out um, according to the principles of modern architecture and planning. What I say is a lot of urban highways in this landscape. Very looking forward uh, for your story, um, especially because we are often with architects and urban planners and you are not that. You are from 
transport engineering and geography. So I think it's also very good to have others thinking with us together because it's not only about one discipline to think about streets. Last but not least, Juan Luis Rivas, uh, from uh, as an associated professor of the Urban and Regional Planning Department of the University of Granada, architect, experience in academia, university, research, teacher, but also in the planning practice, uh, um, different kind of um, uh, 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 knowledge and experiences. I remember, and that's also the reason why we uh, asked um, uh, Juan to participate, is uh, PhD research, an extensive uh, book about mapping uh, urban structure and especially about the streets that are in the Andalusian uh, cities, uh, markable, uh, restructural, at that time new kind of urban areas, etc. Um, in our talk that we had, he will probably uh, unfold much more rich than on that, but this is a thing that is really interesting about, let's say, the urban avenue or the avenue and calle. I don't know how it is in Spanish exactly, how you pronounce it, but you will uh, probably say it. Large, let's say, urbanistic and ur uh, architecture. So looking very, very well forward for your stories, I would like to give the floor to first speaker, Xuan. Can you share your screen with us or your presentation and start your presentation, please? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. And thank you for inviting me. I hope that you can listen correctly. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? It's okay. perfect. So, so I'll start because I don't have much time. So uh, I'm going to explain you the, the case of Barcelona metropolitan area and how we are shifting to a, a more human scale metropolis for, for all, for everyone. Um, but before I want to just give a few numbers about the, the metropolis, is the only metropolis, in formal metropolis in, in Spain. It has 36 municipalities, including Barcelona, in a very relatively small area uh, with 3.2 uh, million inhabitants. It is 2% of the whole Catalonia and half, the, um, half, half of the GDP in that. And it's quite dense, actually. It's it's the same density, the metropolitan area is the same density as Porto, but the Barcelona itself, it's, it's, it's much more. And even though the density uh half of the of the surface is dedicated is is dedicated to open spaces so so that gives us uh, some advantages but also some challenges as you could see as you will see later okay and about the the institution is uh it was formed as a as a law in 2010 but the history is much much longer and it has quite a lot of competences like uh, uh, urban urban planning, but also transport, mobility, ecology, housing, social cohesion, and economic development. Uh, but also um, about uh, direct intervention in the public space and public facilities. So, so we design and we build uh, parks, uh, streets, and public facilities. That's that's very important for us because we can with all these competences we can uh, have the ability to think about the metropolis in a more integrated way we'll come back to that later okay and which is the context of the metropolis that that, that, that barcelona metropolis so uh barcelona uh grown very fast in the 60s through the quick uh industrialization of the area and uh, it also was design most of the things that we have now was designed in this kind of in this period were designed the 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 network of highways that you can see here on the screen uh and also uh it was designed the, the current um urban plan that we still have today 
So the metropolis was a structure uh, as a, uh, using the highways as the main link to the to the to all the municipalities. And this is what we have now. I should say that we were very good on that. So we almost built uh, everything we planned. So what we have today is a very dense network of uh, high capacity uh, uh, roads that uh, have in some places these images, uh, an overlap of mobility infrastructure in the same place that uh, that fragments the territory. And here there is a map of, of mapping all the fragmentation of the metropolitan area, as you can see, is, is quite intense. But also there are other externalities that I um, uh, just stick uh, like uh, noise and also pollution. And here in Barcelona, you can find a perfect example how the more supply in this more demand. So here is the, the graphic. As you can see, the, the demand, if, when we build more and more infrastructure, the demand also grows. And as you can see in a place that where cars are not the main uh, mobility share uh, of the area, only 25% of the, of the, of the movements are made by, by, by car. So 75% are made by public transport and walking. So, so how to deal with this, with this, with these challenges? So Barcelona City is doing quite well on that. He has developed a lot of strategies. So I'm gonna show you very quick three of them because it, they were already explained in this in this webinar by Silvia. And this is the inner block park. So recovering the the the, the courtyards of the of the blocks for for parts for pocket parts. There's the super block strategy how to um, take the cars from the inner streets so you can have uh, places for people. And also the the last strategy that was the, the green axis. So to transform uh, some streets uh, to uh, to green uh, civic corridors. But that's good strategies for the city center. But today still in Barcelona, we have this and the in the at the metropolitan scale, scale most of the most most of them very close to the to where the people live and work. So how how can we achieve a human scale metropolis for all? That was that is still our question, and 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 I want to explain how we are working on that on this to solving this question. We are doing simultaneously three things: we are learning, we are testing, and we are planning. Um, I'm going to go through them very, very quick to give you some examples how we are doing about learning. One of the main things that, that, that we do is exchange, exchange knowledge with, uh, other, other cities and, uh, stakeholders like today. So, so we did as, as Daniel said, uh, uh, Urbac project called Reconnect, and uh, and also we did uh, a network of networks called uh, Walk and Roll, that involves almost forty cities, European cities. Think about the similar problems, and you can find all the knowledge in the Urbac website for 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 both things. Um, the other thing that we have done several internal studies, so not only exchange with other cities, so try to understand a thing with a specific problem that we have and try to find solutions that that what we have done, how to integrate some several highways that that we have to integrate it better to the city, but also to bring more uh, transport, uh, well, mo mobility, um, different mobility in in this in in this infrastructure like public transport bikes and pedestrians but also doing competitions and we did the last the last year uh, we did an exhibition of the competition that 
international competition that we did about how to integrate uh, highway junctions along the metropol the metropolis. M many, many ideas come from this competition and we publish a nice book that also can you can find it in English in our website. Okay, second that we did is testing, testing the learning that we are doing to, so to learning while learning while doing a uh, uh, process. So the first thing, uh, one of the things that we that we tested are the processes. So because to transform um, a highway or to transform a road, to transform a mobility infrastructure to something else, it involves uh, a lot of people. So it affects a lot of people. So it's important that to, to have them involved from the beginning and involved on the project so they are they 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 believe that this is their project and this will solve their their day-to-day -day life so we did um uh, an integrated approach for the transformation of the n150 road to a metropolitan avenue and it was a two years project and now uh it was very successful all municipalities involved, but plus the regional government, and the A and B was the facilitator, and and today it it has many many chances challenge chances that it will be transformed from a road to a metropolitan avenue. Second is uh, constructing, so changing the territory, and this was uh, uh, as another road C two four five that has been transformed recently to a metropolitan avenue from a road. It involves five municipalities and 12 kilometers long. And it has been finished little, half a year ago. Um, and it changed completely. It was municipalities were not connected one to each other. And now it's are connected through uh, walking and public transport and, and, and biking facility. Okay, and with all the knowledge that that we gain, we are also planning the future of the of the metropolis, doing local plans, so doing plans that that are locally with this, but this metropolitan vision that says no, this should be a metropolitan avenue. So how do we activate this metropolitan avenue and create more cent centralities along it to have a win-win situation that. That this uh, that this avenue will have something around around, and the people will be located in this in this location. So these local plants, but also a metropolitan plan. And I have announced that that we approve initially approved last month the metropolitan urban master plan that we have been working since eight years ago, and it for us it will change. It changed the the structure that that was planned in the 70s, as the highways was the main structure of the whole metropolis. To um, the streets and avenues will be the main structure of the of the of the of the, of the, the metropolis of the future. So these are the main things. But I want to explain you about about this about how green axis and streets are the are going to be the, the the civic structure of the of the metropolis and the and the way that 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 has been designed is very simple is a network of the streets and avenues that are uh the, 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 the that the distance between them it's about between 300 meters to 600 meters and then in the middle or uh, or, or next to it it's a green corridor that that also connects all the metropolis with the open spaces so so here you can see the two networks uh place it this one is uh the green corridors that link up the the urban areas with the small parks then bigger parks and at the end with open open spaces and uh, we'll have 778 kilometers of this act uh, of of these axes and 2,500 hectares of structural parks. 
That's one and the other one are the metropolitan avenues that will be the civic access that will structure the whole metropolis. We have designed 10 metropolitan avenues that will link uh, all the city centers of the of the of the metropolis. And it will be also a comprehensive way to navigate through the metropolis. So you will you will know that if you are in a met in a metropolitan avenue and you will walk you will be able to go through from one municipality to another. And these metropolitan uh, avenues will be also uh, access for, for public transport and bike infrastructure. There will be 250 kilometers on, on that. And, and then about, uh, about uh, distances, so so it's not only to have a great network, it's about also about reducing uh, distances. So the idea of the Metropolitan Master Plan is to create a, a, a polycentric metropolis. Doing that, uh, doing that, the, the the distances will be shorter. So it it finds and localizes new metropolitan centralities that will be developed uh, in the following years. So, so that's almost all from our part. So, so to go from a humanist to a humanist scale metropolis for all, you, we need to go from from the current current situation to this vision where the where the where the main axis and the and the main corridors are not roads or highways, are streets, avenues, and green axis. So that's all from my side. Thank you, uh, Juan. Uh, very clear story, uh, very ambition as well. <laughs> uh, but I think it's, uh, we have to believe for a long term planning, I guess, if you want to change uh, this fundamental, let's say, um, task that lays behind us um, to modernize, let's say, the mobility system in metropolitan areas. Uh, very, very interesting to see also a lot of links between little uh, different kind of skills. Um, um, perhaps a, just a, a question that I pop up and maybe we can pick up later is, um, I was wondering because it, it is also, let's say a strategy that lays on the existing structure. So how does it relate within this existing structure? And how can you learn also by not making kind of completely blueprint a model uh, without the context, but basically all the way around. So uh, maybe for later in discussion uh, to start. Thank you very much, uh, Juan. Um, Niklas, uh, our second speaker, please. Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So hello, everyone. My name is Niklas Altosetela and I work at the city of Helsinki as a strategic urban planner. And I'm gonna talk about our boulevard strategy or you might call it as well as a roads to streets type of strategy that we have started with in 2016 or maybe a bit earlier, but I'll go into that soon. So first some background, background information. Helsinki is a city of roughly 660,000 inhabitants and the metropolitan area or the region has 1.5 million inhabitants and we are located quite in the northern parts of, of uh, Europe but still in the southern parts of our country and we're the capital here in Finland. The model split is always important to look at uh, when talking about urban mobility. In Helsinki a lot of our trips are now made by walking and public transportation and of course by cycling also some and then private cars are one fifth of our trips. And obviously a lot of trips are combinations of all of these different modes, or at least some of them. Uh, urban planning is always a, uh, or has always the aspect of multi-level decision-making combined into it. In, in Finland, we have a, uh, or at least in Helsinki, we have a four year pol political term always. So we get a new city strategy every four years. The newest one is from 20, uh, 2021, and it's called like loosely translated the growth, the place for growth 
and growth in many different ways. And then we have a carbon neutrality program. Uh, the target year was set first to 2035. And now in this latest uh, city strategy, uh, the politicians decided to make it early, the target year uh, 2030. So they took five years of uh, five years away from from the time that we have and and it's good because it's a pressing issue but obviously it also makes makes us scratching our heads on how we can achieve this but we, we are now trying to focus on all the big big impact things and and leave the smaller things behind so to say and then today when we're talking about uh transforming roads we have uh the guiding backbone for this comes from the master plan from 2016 which set the new new target for our planning. So our master plan from the from 2016, it's called uh, the urban plan. Uh, it advocates for the expansion of the inner city. Our inner city is located on a peninsula, and there's not that much of it. So we want to expand it because it's really popular and uh, prices there in terms of living and and having your business and so on are quite high. Then we want to create the public uh, transport network city. We already have a really extensive public transportation network, but we want to make it even better. Uh, we want to infill, develop important nodes such as already existing uh, uh, railway stations and, and so on. Then we want to improve the green network in our city. We have a lot of forest and a lot of green areas and a lot of water but we want to keep it that way also. And we want to make them uh, make the, it as a network in the future also. And that's one something that guides us in our planning. And then obviously carbon neutrality plays a big role these days. So in terms of new development, the urban plan uh, is roughly divided into three. One third is the boulevards or the conversions from roads to streets. One third is new areas. And then one third is infill development. And when I was talking about the transforming of the urban structure, here's some diagrams showing what we're trying to achieve with the help of the uh, urban or the uh, master plan. So we want to push our city center outwards, make it make make it then like not sprawl, but actually densifying these already existing areas from the city center outwards, and then connecting everything better. Now we have a transportation network, especially in, in the public transportation part of it, which is quite city center uh, focused, so to say. We can get to the city center from everywhere, but we also want to con connect the city in the east western direction so that you can get from everywhere to everywhere, basically, in, in a reasonable time. Uh, this was the situation roughly 10 years ago in terms of, of these highways leading into the city. Uh, the situation is still pretty much the same. The vehicle numbers are actually pretty much exactly the, exactly the same. Some roads have a bit higher numbers now, but some have actually lower numbers. But in the big, the big picture still stays the same at the moment. And as we all hopefully know, uh, these type of roads take up a lot of space. The intersections take up a lot of space and they are not efficient in terms of uh, the usage of space. Here in this picture, you can see one intersection. It's not, not the biggest, but it's actually quite close to the uh, urban core of, the, of Helsinki, and it shouldn't look like that in the future. And when I said that we have a lot of green space, you can also see that we have a lot of green space in this picture also. Well, in the future, we want to have it looking something like this or maybe this is a bit too futuristic and the more realistic picture is something like this. But however, the target is to transform these roads into streets with a cross section roughly of this picture. This obviously can't be the case in every single section of the roads which will be transformed. But the underlying idea is that there will be a tram line running in, in the center of the street and then there will be place for pedestrians and cyclists and private cars, taxis and so on, and houses or office buildings running along the streets. On a regional scale, you can see our so-called boulevard plants here, the pink ones. So they are quite extensive and they're quite often close to the border of, of Helsinki, especially in the western parts.
Uh, on a closer look, you can see them here. This is just rough sketches, uh, which were done in 2014, if I don't remember correct, and, and uh, as part of the master planning process. Well, uh, stuff happens, as you know, in planning. Uh, the highest administrative court overruled four of our proposed uh, road conversions due to complaints from governmental agencies and, and so on. And this obviously was a big, big shock for us, but we are still happy that we got got four out of these eight approved and are working on them at the moment. So this was 2016 and then 18, the decision making. So where are we now in 2023? Time has passed. So hopefully we are at least a bit further on. Uh, the Western Boulevard city, so to say, one of these which was not overruled, the planning is quite far along. And within the next few years, we're hopefully starting to see the first part of it being built. It's an existing road, which will be converted more to a street. And there's quite a lot of areas that will be built along it and a new tram line. The new tram line won't probably be built before, or won't be ready before 2030 roughly, but the building of it will start uh, within the next few years, hopefully, if everything goes as planned. Then in the more uh, middle parts of Helsinki, we have a similar project ongoing. The planning phase is not as far along, but or it's not in the detailed planning stages yet. It's in a in a sketching or in a backbone planning stage kind of. And the tram here also will hopefully be built in the 2030s, not in the beginning, but maybe in the middle of the 2030s, hopefully. Then uh, Laia Salantia, which is more in the eastern part of Helsinki, a smaller road being transformed into a street. This is actually taking place now as we speak. The first buildings are already being built. The road is being converted and, and the tram line is being built. So this is the first project, kind of, you could say a pilot project in a way. And these are, it's good that we're not working with all of this project in the same stages, because then we can learn as a, as a, as we go from previous examples. And then we have two local master plans going on, like fixing the overruled area, so to say, the gaps left by the by the highest administrative court. And these are now in the early planning stages and we're looking at what to do with them. So as a recap, these are still <laughs> overruled. These are being planned and one of them is even being built, the one that's in the uh, uh, right-hand corner. And then uh, the one that has the check mark and the question mark is was not overruled. The planning is go starting there soon, but it's not, not first on the agenda. And then there's these two big question marks that are the local master plans that we're working on now and negotiating with the governmental agencies on what we could do with the roads and what kind of transformations they could agree on and, and so on. So it's a working progress, but we, are, we have a strong goal in mind and we know the direction that we're going towards. And now we just need to make it happen in a, in a reasonable way. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Niklas, uh, for your um, story and uh, of Helsinki. Um, planning takes time, <laughs> that's for sure. And it is a lot of time and a lot of people. And uh, uh, and it's also good that it, uh, it, is, it, it needs some time in a way, uh, I guess, uh, because it's, it does matter for a lot of people uh, in this. Um, I, also for you, one question or maybe a thematic that we can uh, put on is, uh, the axis of transportation, public transportation. I think it's a kind of interesting strategy uh, on it. But also, um, I, I see it also always connected with new axis of urbanization, new kind of buildings. So it's not an, let's say, only uh, mobility, but it's connected with urbanization as a process. So it's also very interesting. Uh, Juan, um, Luis, last but not least, please. Start your presentation. Okay. 
Okay. Everything is uh, seeing my my screen. Yes, perfect. perfect. Okay. Thank you. Hi to everyone. Thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. Uh, it is a pleasure to be uh, for me to be here in this session with all of you, joining this interesting and worthy initiative on the future design of streets. Um, nowadays, um, talking about streets is fundamental because they are surely the main special resource um, of cities to be able to correct economic and social inequalities and fight against uh, climate change, but also to balance urban territories and cities. Uh, in this sense, I would like to say that rather than talking about big streets uh, by the size, length, uh, the space the, of the section, I would prefer to talk about uh, significant cities, uh, significant streets, sorry, or meaningful streets. Those streets that take greater urban responsibility for mobility, but also for economic identity, identity terms, uh, link it with, with what the city really is. Uh, I would, I would, um, we would speak in this case of city street, as the street in the city that today maintains in the best possible way the balance between past, present, and future of that city. It is also the street that most accumulates the size of journeys and requirements of uh, citizens. The objective of this presentation would be to try to claim a complex approach to the streets of the city, mainly uh, its big streets or city streets, neighborhood streets, uh, district streets, and so on. A streets would be seen, therefore, as multidimensional. And what I will try to do is briefly provide some of these dimensions through some urban visions of the city of the city streets. Um, yeah, streets uh, basically uh, the first of, of this urban dimension, urban visions, is urban universe of city street. The streets basically go through the the city. Uh, in the walls of Stephen Hall. As we move across the street, we are enveloped by a network of superimposed perspectives, a kind of parallactic space. In this sense, the city street has a systemic quality, but also a narrative one, and it should be used as a tool for reading what is urban. The concept of urban universe of the street arises from the weathering works of the street concept that in theoretical urbanism has been developing. That is why I bring here, as an example of background, the redevelopment studies of avenues by the architect Denise Scott Brown, which helps to understand the close relationship between the avenue and its surrounding, which blows, blurs the border between built facade and street and returns to architecture the road project, betting on a three-dimensional and multi-temporal vision of the new conception of the avenue. Focusing on the city of Granada, uh, we would understand the urban universe of the city street of the Camino de Ronda. Uh, Camino de Ronda is a main axis of more than two kilometers that crosses Granada from north to south and continues in the northern and southern peripheries as a perimeter ring in the internal city. Urban universe of the city street could be defined as the system made up of all the essential components of the street, plus all those urban elements that can be precisely related thanks to the street, including its future design. In the same way, I bring you here the example of the urban universe of city street of Malaga, which runs parallel to the coast until it crosses the Guadal Medina River to enter a planned area after the 60s, an urban fabric that works as an urban grid to, to be studied as a local framework of the city street, understanding the set of public spaces and mobility relationships that would allow calibrating the elements and minor streets of the whole system. The second urban vision, or the, the last three ones, is going to be just pointed out for me. Uh, the first one is urban times and identity, because the critical reflection on urban times is fundamental in urban planning and urban design. Past, present, and future overlap in the understanding of city elements, streets as well. The Camino de Ronda in Granada was conceived as a kind of external ring 
as a limit to urban growth. The historical approach also um, allows us to understand its isolated character and the lack of associated urban fabric. The slope map there in the, in the right side, the slope map of the city and the position as a rectification of the level cubes of the fluvial depression are also a fundamental issue. In this way, it is possible to elaborate these territorial ideas that are important to characterize the street. The radial structure of the territory that communicates the city with the surroundings, or the great difficulty that the city has in terms of, the, of its north-south uh, road system. The third uh, urban vision would be the urban roles of city street, the set of methodologies and deep understanding of the street led us in proposing three scenarios that would reflect the three urban roles that the city street system must current, currently face. The first of them would place the street at the last urban street in front of the metropolitan context and would make it necessary to attend to its relations at a distance and with the agrarian landscape. The second one would identify the street at the same time as the black bone of his own neighborhood, a local urban fabric that is located on the first periphery of the city, which formulates a set of functional requirements and the necessary design of local public space. The third scenario tells us about the responsibility of the city street as an extension of the historical of the historic city center as a continuity of the central tourist routes linked to the foundation of the urban settlement, its geography, etc. Unfortunately, we don't have time to explain the last urban vision in a proper way, but uh, we can say that city streets have to be understood as an urban architecture and as an urban space. The dynamism and oscillation of trade functions on the ground floor its par, its cross sections, its differentiation of the its surfaces in terms of the narrative line that cuts the relationships, which give us an interesting set of our urban fabrics articulated by the axis. To conclude, um, sorry, the corners of the street also indicate opportunities, conflicts, obsolescence, and establish a game of hierarchies and positioned with a differentiated interest for urban design of a street. In order to conclude, I would like to say that the streets of, this, of the city are not only a space for potential change, but they are also a key part of its structure, its meaning, its history, even more so the big streets. The streets are multidimensional, a place that is closely related to the urban fabric of which they take part, approaches should always be performed from overlapping perspectives that integrate the architecture of relationships while they include identity and landscape links. The urban project of the city street cannot be isolated nor moved away from this deep understanding of its urban form, its constellation of relationships and its role in the urban development. Urban design will be precisely determined and sized and adjust by the careful and thorough observation of the street complexity. Thank you for, for your attention. Thank you, uh, Luis, uh, Juan Luis. Thank you for your contribution. Um, and uh, I won't, would like to open now our talk uh, online. So, uh, Joan and uh, Niklas, please uh, open your screen. Uh, and your video, very, very good. Three wonderful uh, uh, presentations uh, with a lot of questions, of course, always. And, and the time is always really short, but I like this kind of framework because then we get to some point. Please. I think my camera is not working. It's just one in here. Uh, yes. Okay, perfect. I think the voice uh, you can hear it. Uh, so uh, it is the remarkable thing about technology. Anyway, um, uh, Juan, also for you, I, uh, maybe I start with you, uh, uh, Juan, uh, um, um, because I, I think you have 
uh, uh, the, the, the multidimensional and the complexity. I think this is something that um, it's often, let's say, in uh, the modern models from the 60s, let's say, or the functional city, it's always sold as a negative point because uh, complexity, you have to make things simple in terms of pro production or urbanization, etc. So that's why we separate different kind of functions in the city and so on. I guess, um, let's say, the fascination about complexity, it's not, uh, there's also a value on, on it. Uh, uh, and I, I guess more about the existing situation, how we can do with it, the multi-layers, etc. And I would like to ask you, how do you see complexity, let's say, in understanding um, the question how to improve this kind of streets? Uh, and maybe the case of Granada is, is maybe a good case to illustrate it. Well, from a point of view, the point is uh, the, the issue would be uh, most of cities in, um, in in general in, in Western countries and um, are mixing the the idea of infrastructure with a street and um, for me it would be completely the different uh, the different idea and we need to to defend or we need to fight against the optimization of the streets just only in terms of mobility and that is the reason because i try to explain that uh, um, we need a streets uh, complex streets uh, connecting with the history uh, and we need to understand the, the this link uh, with the foundation to to move away or to to take distance from the the obvious necessity to connect uh, energy, people, uh, things uh, in a metropolitan context. Because uh, uh, by the opposite, uh, if, if we don't do that, um, maybe we can uh, have a, a, a really uh, important uh, loss. Uh, or because a city needs people walking in the sidewalks, trade, housing, and maybe doesn't need so much mobility. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is the, so uh, is, you cannot avoid uh, the complexity of a street. The street is a part of the city, so, but you can simplify the idea of a street if you identify uh, simply a street with an infrastructure for mobility. Mm -hmm. This is my, my point of view. Yeah. Okay, very, very, very good. I, I, um, maybe, maybe just to go to Barcelona and pick up the same uh, element, and maybe also the the question. It's about the relation with the existing and the new that you are, you know, that you are, are dealing. Because often we are not looking to a territory in, you know, with a carte blanche. Um, uh, is this discussion also a part of? Um, let's say, in Barcelona, so from a road to a street, and in that sense, completely all the kind of look to the same space. Yes, yes, of course it is. And it's very related to what Luis was talking about, um, because the, in Barcelona, almost everything is built, metropolitan area, no more things can be done on the outside. It's only inside to densify inside. So it's it's all done actually, but we need to, to improve what we already have. And the and the how we started this, it was looking back and saying which were the 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 main the foundational streets that structured the territory and how this territory was before the big infrastructure, before the large urbanization become. And if you like if you look, identify which are the 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 Roman roads, on which are the medieval roads, uh, you can see two things: that that these roads connect city center to city center. So it's one of the strategies they link at this. And the other thing is that you have related to this the the retail 
most of the retail are are, are, are put on that, and also most of the history of the city. So, so the 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 nicer, bigger cities, I nicer and bigger uh, uh, important buildings are located uh, next to it. So the heritage of the city are close to that. So, so for 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 us, it was the main targets that we had to to build this new infrastructure, this new this new infrastructure that connect the metropolis uh, and link it to mobility. But we don't need to confuse to to see the mobility as as only cars. So for us, the mobility is a is a is a link that 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 moves people move people not cars so move people through walking mostly because as 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 you remember uh barcelona is uh is uh, the 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 amsterdam of walking and also it's it's rated to public transport and if there is a space there will be cars on that but this is the last priority on that and the other thing that 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 the metropolitan master plan and the plans that we have worked on that and we identified is that the this link cannot be the same in all our in all all the place because the 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 the, the, the character of the of the of this street it depends of the of the place that is located no so it should be so it should be have to both approaches to the metropolitan approach that it's going to be a, a metropolitan street or a metropolitan avenue but that's just going to be the place the local place that the people will move or will use uh day-to-day -day life to go to the school or go to the shop or go to work so to have to maintain both characters the local characters and also to 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 build this this metropolitan identity is one of the things that we are we have in mind in the in in this plan. Mm -hmm. And and for the last question that you asked, yeah, yeah, we we have we need to transform the existing the existing infrastructure. First was the road, the the but also that's going to be also uh, highways and related to what Nicholas was explaining. Highways are are in the in the plan as well. But we don't not in different. I think the different strategy from from what Nicholas explained it is that we don't transform the high the highways, the inner highways, because they are highways. We're gonna transform first the highways that that helps us to structure better the metropolis. Mm -hmm. So that's a different uh, approach. I think the the result is the same, but the approach is different. Yeah. And I, I, I guess the territory in the context is from place to place very different. So it's also very local with the local, um, let's say, people, population, stakeholders, economic structure, but also all, you know, the space is limited sometimes in things. Although all this uh, infrastructure uh, exit highway nodes, there's a lot of space as well, uh, if you do that uh, easily. Uh, and Nicholas, um, in Helsinki, of course, you have um with this urban landscape highways you have a lot of space of course and that is quite mm -hmm. um how do you say it um uh, it, it, can you say that helsinki can be compared with um northern american cities uh where you have a lot of space and which is in that sense uh that you look maybe earlier let's say to other parts of the world for re reference than europe is, is it true or Am I completely uh, wrong in this uh, observation? It's partly true <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, of course, uh, like motorization and uh, and car car plan car centric planning has not been present that long. If you look at history of cities on on a longer scale, but but the thing with Helsinki that bears to be brought to light is that. Uh, Helsinki was a really small, or on a European scale, a really small city and quite dense city until uh, the 1960s, 
or maybe in the 50s it started expanding then the 60s and the 70s was this time of like big expansion of the city and that was the time when people from from finland from the rural part started moving into the cities and actual urbanization started here in this like properly in the 60s and the 70s it had already started in the 50s like slowly but uh this has to do with of course the second world war which Finland was quite heavily involved in and that shaped our society and then after that like things started going and at that stage car centric planning was quite kind of the status quo in in the world quite around and and that's what that in that sense we were quite unfortunate that a lot of our building of our city started in in that time of the world when cars dominated so yes we did definitely look to the us we like their highway capacity manual has definitely played a big role in how our roads have been shaped by like definitely but also we were in a way a bit unlucky at what time we started started to grow and then sprawl sprawl was the way of growth in that period of time and now we're but now again we're locked in a way we're lucky that we have this situation because when we're kind of running out of land we still have these highways which we can transform and we can easily recover land in that sense so it's always uh, the coin has always two sides as as we know it's a kind of specificity, yeah? so you have a highway when you have a lot of space and with it you have also kind of urban spines, uh, uh, urbanization areas and it goes two things together. So it's more uh, what I understood from uh, El thinking is that you have a densification strategy of, let's say, the, the, the more central areas uh, of Helsinki, but combining yeah. with new kind of mobility transport in its sense. Yes. Um, about uh, Helsinki and the region of Helsinki has, a, in, in, I believe, in, in terms of public transport, a really good functional system uh, um, um, with all kind of different kind of modes in a way. Um, mm -hmm. Is this um, the same kind of trams, uh, or is it uh, more a kind of light rail? Is it a metro uh, speed, or is it a kind of hybrid system? Uh in the most or the ones like that are, are gonna function as the core like of these boulevards or co road conversions they are like light rails so they are the stops are not that frequent and the speeds are quite high but mm -hmm. then they are they will come into the city center eventually and that's where they will have to slow down so it will it's it's kind of hybrid system in a way but leaning more towards like a fast fast connection light rail system okay yeah. And it works like that, like this, and I think it's just to understand that it's still really centralized to this, uh, uh, let's say, historical center, uh, because it's really spine uh, to this, this center. I, I believe there is also a lot of other kind of centers. Um, I think we miss some connection. Niklas. <laughs> Okay, I look, I'm going for words. Niklas, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Very good. Did it you... Me out now. I don't know why. Let's hope that I stay in. <laughs> no problem. We don't see you. Uh, but did, could you hear my last question? No, it just no. cut off in the middle. <laughs> uh, um, well, um, uh, I'm also a little bit now, <laughs> but uh, yeah. the, the thing is about, let's say, uh, um, about the, the different kind of centers uh, uh, in um, Helsinki. So you have also the uh, neighborhood uh, municipality Espo, uh, for instance, mm -hmm. with different mm -hmm. kind of, uh, I think, Itakeskus and then airport, yeah. Yeah. So you different yeah. kind of things. Uh, is that um, what you see clearly in Barcelona as well? So the multi uh, polycentrical uh, uh, things in, in the region, also here in Porto. Is that a part of the strategy also with the boulevard? It's not only to the center, but also towards, uh, let's say, linking different kind of centers. Yeah, yeah. Creating a network city also, not in terms only of public transportation, at all, but also in terms of different urban nodes. And we have a lot of like sub 
sub city centers, so to say. We have the bigger city center, and then we have other smaller, smaller centers, and we are trying to strengthen all of those different centers. Then, when you talk about a, on a regional scale, uh, in Finland, this the municipalities are competing against each other mm. for taxpayer money. So, so obviously, we do a lot of cooperation, and some of our trans, like bigger or most of our bigger transportation projects are are done in cooperation but then of mm-hmm. course there's this aspect of competing competing with the neighbors too and and that brings some some different things to the agenda also okay okay do they adopt also a boulevard strategy or is completely different kind of approach well partly <laughs> why why some of the uh some were overruled had to do with our neighboring municipalities and how they're uh inhabitants could access Helsinki by car car traffic and and that the like national authorities are still or were back then and and still are to a certain level quite keen on keen mm. on the, keeping the status quo and and then we are trying to push for for more radical uh like carbon carbon targets and and so on and and we see that that cutting cutting the amount of turn, uh, car tra- traffic is is a key in reaching our climate goals and and the government has also strict go- climate goals i mean all of us do in 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 eu but then the way that we see it on a practical level is not always eye to eye but we're getting into a better situation in my opinion now on the regional level also mm. Mm. okay very good um going to granada uh juan uh, camino de ronda um you t- mentioned a lot of things about complexity but also about let's say the identity um and uh, in the very beginning you said it well of course it's not about big streets it's about meaningful or significant streets in a sense and you showed a few slides of this um camino da ronda and i was quite intrigued about one uh, that um i think it was mapped the the ground floor layer of a lot of buildings and the relation between, let's say, the buildings and the and 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 the, and the Camino. And maybe you can explain a little bit uh, that relation, why you showed it, uh, and why you think that 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 relation is important. Well, um, yeah, I, I was I was thinking uh, while I I am I was listening to you, to Niklas and Joan, that is. Uh, the point is to to identify what is the quality, to, uh, what is the the uh, the way that you are uh, able to 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 identify what is an street. And a street mm. is a can is a channel. It's a channel, but it's not only a channel. It's all is is a little, is a uh, the capability to to relate to relate all the relationships around this. To this channel, you know? um, and for that, uh, the relation between a street and housing, and a street and ground floor, and a street and the parallel, the next parallel, or the more public, the public space in this neighborhood, because citizens um, walk, uh, creating that kind of relationship. But you, you can you can talk about that relation between the the middle of the axis and the facade in terms of metropolitan area. Uh, I don't know if I if everybody knows the, the situation of Granada, but Granada is not an isolated city. It's a metropolitan area also with mm-hmm. different scale than Barcelona or or what happened in Finland. But uh, we, we have a 33 municipalities walking together, 33, 33 city centers with different scales, moving people with more than I think sixty thousand sixty thousand movements by car per day, mm. per day. So we have a lot of movements, a lot of displacement of people, and this is the point that we can we can uh, reflect, we can have a critical reflection about the relation between the axis and the channel, and the side and the. The, the, the both sides, no? the, mm-hmm. the river sides, no? because the, the capability to cross, if you are able to cross the city, the, the street, maybe you are in, an, in, a, in a really horizontal space, 
But if you are if you have an infrastructure and you segregate the the this multimodality or or this different kind of mobility, but you are not able to cross and you create really like two different spaces, one of them in the infrastructure and the other uh, is a be belonging belonging to the past epoch, uh, you, you, you are losing something. So that is the, the point that we need to consider what is the, our housing around, what is the ground floor, what kind of trade you have, what is this, where is the success, uh, what other kind of, of of section of the of the of the street is a is a failure or you have an opportunity so like Denise Scott Brown touched of, um, us at uh, 40 years ago the oscillation between the street and the buildings it, it depends on the, the 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 type of the of the retail and you have a bank, you can go into uh, Stanford Anderson has a, a really, really nice research in order to to show that the, the facade is only a, how to say in English, membrane or mm -hmm. is a, it's something that you can move and is is really important. The, the courtyards, the the backside of the buildings, everything take part, uh, take part in, in the in the life of this of the street. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if that kind of relation between between different parts of the surroundings is considered when politicians, or, uh, for example, in Granada, we have a really important threat of new highways up or over the mm -hmm. landscape, uh, the outskirts, the agrarian landscape, uh, because they are not uh, understanding that we need to renew well all roads. We need to to be more sophisticated, the the surface in in historical roads, better, much better than than create new infrastructure without relation with the with the borders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, the, that's I, the I, point. I, that they, yeah, I need trade, but not only trade. We need the access of housing. Mm -hmm. We need to understand a street, a kind of a place. The street is a place. It's a little bit big, a little bit large. Or a little bit thin, but it's a place as, as well. well. It's depending on what kinds of streets here, small ones, big ones, uh, middle sides. But the, the, the main, my main message is that say it, it's not about the site of, in terms of um, urban morphology or architectural morphology of dimension. It's much more about all these kinds of layers about history, but also the functionality and how it's organized, how it's, you know, and, 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 and that probably it's also not only in historical timeline, but also in kind of rhythms of days and daily day rhythms, right. weekly day rhythms, monthly, yearly, because all those things affect in a way how we use streets, uh, if we are outside or not outside, if we are only inside, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I completely agree with this. Let's say um, uh, I call it normally urban depth. Um, it's about let's say the porosity or the depth in a way in which let's say the building contributes of the urban life of the public space of a street and vice versa as well. So I think there is a relation with it. Um, at the same time. It's also a relation that is kind of difficult, let's say, for municipalities to deal because private space is private and public space is public. So normally if you have, let's say, a competition of a street, <laughs> uh, it's about, let's say, the surface that is really, let's say, legally uh, the public's part. And the thing that is buildings are of the private uh, uh, persons or companies or whatever. Uh, but I, I believe there is a, a much more relation with it and, and should be much more on it. Uh, Niklas, you showed a few of these renderings uh, mm -hmm. about boulevardies in, uh, in, in Helsinki. Is this also a concern, let's say, this, this interrelation between the building and what kind of space you are making? Definitely, and I would like to like bring to this discussion also kind of the fundamental thing of, of when we talk about roads or streets or whatever public like space where we have used it for transportation mainly in the past, that has been the mindset kind of. Now we're shifting the mindset towards or like when we have given that space 
to transportation, to the need of transportation, to the need of moving from place A to place B and C and D and so on. We have disregarded the people who live there. The people who actually would want to use that space for something else. It's their daily like mm. habitat, so to say. They live there. Now we give the space in a lot of places to people coming from somewhere further out and then they want to get into the city center or to a local smaller city center or whatever, they get to take that space into their use and disregard the needs of the people living there. And that's something that we're kind of trying to shift now. And here, obviously, like the facades and the ground level and, and how everything is connected to each other, how we give space to pedestrians and cyclists separately not shoved in together because they don't belong together they're completely different speeds and so on this has a huge uh, role in how we will succeed with the, with these projects and that's why i think it's really good that we are like have several projects ongoing but they're in different phases so that if we would happen to make a mistake somewhere we can learn from it or if we would happen to really succeed somewhere we can also learn from it mm -hmm. and obviously obviously we're also looking at other cities in the world i mean we're not the first ones doing this by any means mm -hmm. a lot of other cities in the world have been doing it for for decades already but but i it's a whole new way of looking at space and who kind of not owns it in terms of legal perspective but who is the space for and that's mm. something that i think a lot of cities are doing in in different scales i mean paris is taking a lot of uh parking lots away they are giving the space back to people in that way we're trying to in in helsinki the these projects are a lot bigger but it's to to a core it's kind of the same thing giving back the space to people and the, 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 and the, the ongoing process, I think this is also a kind of important thing that we are, I, I think we don't have a blueprint at the end or something with each other because it's, you know, the, the thing. But uh, about the process, I, I think because we, I guess, going to Barcelona, uh, uh, Joan, um if I remember, let's say from the 19th Olympic Games, you started already, let's say, uh, some areas to get more for pedestrians, uh, later on uh, some Vikings, and it seems that let's, let's say in the last de decades it's kind of really uh, a speed in this transformation. What do you think was the key that made that possible? And what kind of challenge do you have for the next decades to do? Can you say maybe uh, uh, experience because I think that that is also the process. Um, it can be exciting, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> promising as well. It's not all negative. Uh, what I want to say. <laughs> yeah, what happened in Barcelona for the last yeah ten ten years? It's been it in ten years, but it started twenty years ago. It's quite of incredible. Um, Barcelona has a a very specific situation compared to many cities in Europe, that it's a very dense area where the people move mostly by 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 walking and by public transport, but it has the most dense vehicle per, per square meter in the in Europe. So it has a lot of cars on it. Um, so and because it's very dense, there's a lot of movements. Per, density of movement using cars so the car was a, 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 a and it still is a, a big problem that that takes more than around 60 percent of the public space in barcelona that's a lot for this what what nicholas was talking about that it's it it is it it is used by only 25 percent and and take 60 percent and most of these people come from around from from outside the barcelona so they are using the space that the, the the people who live there so that's quite uh unfair so so barcelona started a large process so reduce um and reduce the space for cars um uh, step by step first uh doing bus lanes 
bus lanes reduce the 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 the, car, the space for car then then enlar enlarging the 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 pavements also they do bike lanes that bike lanes also reduce the car capacity and then using more complex things like like um like super blocks or green axis um the the idea is to arrive to this first situation that the that the that the everyone has this the that the space that that more or less they deserve so in terms of the of the of the use that uh, that they are doing and to bring this 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 local thing but but i think that now that barcelona is, is doing that i think that that we need to and we are pushing to extend these solutions not only in the in the in the city but in the in the in the in the metropolitan scale because uh, there are many municipalities that are very close to each other that that they are uh, have big barriers through the 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 mobility infrastructure and they are disconnected and have and have also the the externalities of of the people moving around, but uh, they have suffered these externalities and they don't get many of 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 of, of these spaces. So, so to to extend this model and create a new model of a metropolitan model where where the where the people can move differently and can has, can use the public space differently, can use this 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 space as public space as public space for them. I think it's a, a, a way that we should move through, move through that direction. <laughs> I understand, but you you use a few times uh, uh, words just uh, just city of the equal uh, uh, for for so that they have and they don't have, and to make it more just for uh, for everybody. I think that's a really interesting uh, 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 approach, uh, and that, that I think it's a value. Uh, that uh, uh, and uh, let's say then you can talk about the details and uh, the approach uh, uh, on it, but as as on ground level, um, uh, the um, yeah I, the, the high rate of cars uh, versus uh, uh, that are coming from outside inside every day and the ones that uh, use walking mainly. Uh, uh, that's that's very fair. Um, hey, we have ten minutes uh, still, and this last ten minutes, I want to uh, focus, uh, uh, let's say, on um, at the end. Uh, the The title was "Big Streets uh, Today." The sub, uh, and and what I mean with big streets is a little bit, let's say, the those avenues, those you know corridors or doors, exits. Uh, that uh, are important, let's say, t at a metropolitan or a city level, that it functions uh, in a whole together. Um, and that's, uh, um, to improve this kind of type of streets, how to say it, um, means also a different, completely different approach. And it's not about a livable street or, uh, you know, it's about super blocks uh, strategy. It's something else in that sense. Um, I would like to have, let's say, a roundup of everybody, of you, and ask um, what are, in a way, the three takeaways that you think from every of your cases that you present, you must, um, let's say, consider, uh, apply, uh, integrate in the strategy um, uh, to first make them functional, but also meaningful in a way uh, using your word uh, uh, one um, for uh, for the society um, because at the end it's also not only about people transportation but it's also goods and service and information that go and get into the city again um, maybe Nik Niklas may I ask uh, to come on in this uh, and then I will do Juan and then Juan just to have uh, another order now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, difficult question, Com big question. Three takeaways from uh, what we are doing, trying to do here, and what we are trying to keep in mind is that we need to use kind of use what we have already in terms of space, so that we can't just keep on expanding. We need to use the space that we have in a more more efficient way in in many terms, not only 
transforming the roads to streets, but also when we then do that transformation, how many lanes do we actually need? How much, how can we allocate space in an efficient way? So space efficiency is number one. Then I, I like also what we've been talking about just city and, and, and just the city has to be affordable for people. We don't have a city if we don't have people. I mean, the, the people build the city. They are the building blocks of the city. So we need to make it affordable and, and reachable for everyone. And that's what we're trying to do with the densification of this, like using the space in an efficient way and densifying and in that way, creating more, more uh, um, opportunities for people to live in this city. So that's, uh, so space efficiency, uh, justice in terms of, of, of opportunity, and then the third has to be climate climate action. It, like it's one of the driving factors here, definitely in what we are doing, and it has to be it has to do with everything. And in Finland, we are quite lucky, maybe with the situation we have now, we are not yet. Uh, experiencing extreme heats or st things like that, but we know that we have to play our parts and we want to be a leader and Helsinki wants to be a leader. So everything that we do has to have the climate climate agenda as part of, of, of the three things that are most important. Thank you, Niklas. Um, um, very clear. Uh, Juan. Well, <laughs> I was... Uh writing down my, my three takeaways then. But, uh, well, I, I would like I would like to say uh, the first one for me, uh, more urban design, more projects and less solutions. In terms of um, when we move solution from one place to another, uh, it's, it's nice that we have a, that a, if we have a guidebook, uh, something that Okay, this is the solution for that kind of a space. But, uh, but uh, for me, uh, each element uh, in, in a city deserves uh, uh, its own urban design and its own understanding. And, uh, and you need to, com to, to be compatible or to, you need to combine uh, the solutions, the general solutions is a, is a way to approach with the specific urban project and urban design for each uh, for these elements because each element normally is going to have a its own history its own for example in, in my example camino de ronda if you see um, this line with another parallels and the grid on or the urban grid the urban fabric you can you can think that it's a plan but it's not a plan it's the opposite of the plan it was a road, and after that, after that, uh, it was uh, they they were um, all the other kind of streets go with the first one. But this one is it was an isolated road, and so more projects and less general solutions. And uh, proximity is is a, is a is a rule. We need to we need to create new urban nodes, new urban uh centralities uh, that offer uh, everything on daily uh, routine uh, and avoiding uh, stupid or uh, unuseful uh, movements so we need to create uh, nodes um, and we need to work on proximity even if we are talking about uh, bigger streets and the third one is not confuse or not mix, uh, I don't know what is the verb in English, perfect, but uh, urbanization with urbanism. Urbanization is a, is a part of, uh, is a, well, you, you need to, you need to decide what happened with the surface, but urbanism, urban planning, urban design is three-dimensional, is uh, multi-dimensional. Um, not, not the example here, uh, what is a fantastic the initiative of to 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 convert to transform road in boulevards metropolitan well, the, the metropolitan green axis and the transformation in Helsinki that Niklas uh, talked before 
uh, but in others, in, in a lot of cities, uh, there, I think there are, there is a confusion. There is a, a mix between urbanization, the, the jazz table, and we have another kind of, of, uh, of uh, tool in between hands, uh, really, really nice that come, that understand the whole problem, the whole problem. So maybe one big street doesn't need a urbanization plan. What the big needs is um, an urban planning and, 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 and a master plan to involve housing, this urban fabric, the, this part of the city, and main, the, the biggest street here is a, a, a guest uh, a protagonist uh, in, this, uh, in this game. But the, the solution is not only in the surface. It's impossible to disconnect. And it happens a lot. We are disconnecting a lot the surface with the vertical dimension, other um, peripheral dimensions, surroundings of the street. Sorry. For me. Thank you, Juan. Uh, a, a, a very uh, good point, uh, Juan. Uh, uh, your three takeaways uh, uh, in, in yeah. some <laughs> uh, maybe, sure. maybe also for our I'm... audience. So if if we talk about how to improve this kind of streets, what do you have to do? Yeah, I think my my first way is go for uh, uh, human scale metropolis for everyone, for mm. all, and that that means three things. It's uh, we need to have better places better places for everyone, also better connected, and to a, that, that can contain uh, better communities, better, better places for people. So that, that, that's the three, that's the, the three things related to, to, to the, what the human scale metropolis. And rethink mobility infrastructure is an opportunity to achieve that. It's, uh, I think is a perfect example, how to have an ugly, an ugly place that it was also all, only used for a monofunctional use can be transformed as a multi-use space for new neighborhoods, new communities, nice, nice place, very well connected, and also as a as a as a kickoff for a regeneration of the neighborhoods that were there. So they were facing in an ugly place. Now that's gonna face in a very better place. So they can be uh First step for a urban regeneration of the more extensive areas. And my last takeaway mm -hmm. is I want to propose a change of the name of the webinar. Maybe it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> is big streets for short distances. Very good. Uh, thank you, uh, Joan. I think you are too late, but maybe next year we can have an, uh, <laughs> on that one <laughs> because we entered this session already. Um, the future design of streets. Well, um, thank you all very much for your insights, for your contributions. Um, uh, I think I have uh, a lot of to say to say. Maybe just one thing to add is I think um, we need better clients to understand what is about. Uh, because if you don't have a good client, you can don't have a good planning commission or team and organization. And that starts at the end also with politics and with society. I think that is really fundamental also in how we approach. Thank you very much for your everything. Um, I mentioned already there are a few web links. We will put it on our website so everybody can find it. Um, if you have other uh, links that you want to share with us, send it to us. Uh, we are uh, happy to share the good examples and inspiring uh, projects all over because we are here to inspire uh, to share ideas and to improve, let's say, together. Uh, our most common space is our streets. It's our democratic space. Thank you all. Um, I would like, of course, to thank all my team again. And um, don't forget to um, fit us, visit us next month, the 17th of uh, May. And we have then the last session of this webinar series uh, this year. And uh, our uh, thematic is outside uh, Urbia. And that is going to be challenged because at the end, uh, we are always talking about more urban or city streets. 
and we are challenging ourselves how to do that in the region. So we had some kind of insights today, but uh, next year, next month, we are going to full on that. Thank you very much. I hope you liked it. Stay in touch and uh, see you uh, next month. Thank you very much.